What's going on everyone? My name is Alpha and today we're back with the Pokemon Challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon X and today's challenge will be can I beat Pokemon X Hardcore Nuzlocke using only Grass type Pokemon? Now this is actually something I haven't done which is surprising because I swear we've done every single type possible but we haven't done a Grass type only challenge on Pokemon X. So the rules are going to be on screen right now for you guys to read. It's pretty simple, Hardcore Nuzlocke, obviously the mods are modified. And finally, and the most important rule of each of my challenge video, each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So thank you so much for leaving a comment in my previous challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after a Pokemon in my future challenge videos, just drop it in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And while you're down there, please remember to leave a like on this video because it really will help me a lot. And it'll get me on recommended and subscribe to the channel because we bang out weekly videos all the time. And finally, let's get into the video. Quick intro, just like always, our first Pokemon, our first grass type Pokemon is obviously going to be Chespin. Though we have to soft reset, I've already done all three of them and Chespin for the second time now. So I think I've soft reset it probably the most out of anyone for these shiny starters. It's up there because even though the odds are modified, they're still pretty difficult so still fine. And eventually we're going to find ourselves a shiny Chespin. Ooh, neutral nature though, so it's not too useful, but we got to keep going with it. From there, we're going to go into the forest. Is it Chandeloon Forest? Chandeloon is the forest. In the forest, where you're able to find yourselves the Elemental Monkey, which wasn't in my notes. So I had to uh, which is rewrite my notes because I completely forgot about Pan Sage in this forest. So we're going to hunt ourselves for a shiny Pan Sage. And for the first two hours, we didn't find a single Pan Sage. We found every single Elemental Monkey for some reason, but Pan Sage. But eventually, we're going to find ourselves a Pan Sage and a shiny one at that. And catching our team and we're able to get ourselves the evolutionary stone really quickly we're able to get it like right off the bat as you can see you just gotta do uh, the super training once you're done with the super training you unlock some extra levels that get you some evolutionary stone so we're gonna do that eventually because there is a lot of grass type pokemon that evolve through the stones but from there we can go out into the first gym of the game we're gonna face out against viola viola is gonna be the bug type gym leader of the game and we'll start the battle off against her using my chest pin now Chespin's actually a really good starter for this because it has Rollout. And Rollout, you know, always beats Bug-type Pokemon. It builds up continuous damage and it's going to one-shot Vivalon. And we're going to easily beat Viola in like four turns. So Viola goes down and we get our first gym batch of the game. And we can move on into Route 3 or 4, something like that. I think it's it's Route 4. It's going to give access to our next Pokemon, which is going to be a Buddu. Now, unfortunately, Buddu evolves through Happiness and also through a Shiny Stone into a Rosary. So at this point, I don't know if it's that worth it, but we're going to search out our next Pokemon, which is going to be a Buddu in here. Buddu is a baby Pokemon, so it's going to take a little bit to evolve too. So we're going to catch it on team and move on into the Professor Sycamore's fight, which I completely forgot to save in front of him. And uh, he doesn't let me back out of picking a starter Pokemon. So we're going to pick Bulbasaur. Unfortunately, it's not shiny. So we don't get to use Bulbasaur. We don't ever get to use the Kanto starters ever. But we move out into Route 6, I believe. Outside in Route 6, we're able to find ourselves another Grass-type Pokemon. Which is actually going to be one of the more useful and one of the cool looking ones. Uh, it's going to be Skiddle. Skiddle is the pre-evolution to Gogo, Which is actually a cool looking Pokemon. And especially with this color scheme. Very unique. I love it. Add it to my team and then we're gonna move out into route six where we're gonna find ourselves another shiny pokemon we're just stacking up at this point we find ourselves an oddish in the wild with not a great pope it doesn't learn that great of moves ever and we don't have that many grass type moves to begin with so we're gonna catch it on our team and it also evolves through a stone so it's just a hassle to have but it's nice to have just in case we need a sack or anything it's not gonna be the most powerful pokemon but we're gonna add it to our team and finally get all the leaf stones we need we're gonna get our leaf stone to evolve our pan sage into a semi sage and move on into Glittering Cave, which is going to be a bit of a pain uh, later down the line. But we'll come back to this in a little bit. We're going to move out into Route 10, I believe. In the Yellow Grass, we're able to find ourselves a Shiny Eevee, which we spent a little bit finding and also catching. This catching thing was a, such a pain that our Eevee almost got away from us. But eventually, we're going to catch ourselves an Eevee and add it to our team. But we can't use it until very much later. Uh, around the 8th gym is going to be when we're able to use this Eevee that evolves into a Leafeon. So for now, Eevee is just going to be in the PC, but we're going to use it eventually. So from there, we're going to move out into the second gym of the game where we're going to face off against Grant next. Grant is going to be the rock type gym leader in the game. And since we have a semi Sage now, it shouldn't be too difficult. I'm looking at a timeline right now. It's 30 seconds of battling. So we're going to start the battle off against him using my semi Sage to Seat Bomb into the Amora. Knock him out in one shot. The Tyrant comes out next and we're able to Seat Bomb twice in front of it. Take a Rock Tomb and then take another one if 
we're slow enough, but I don't think we're slow enough. Seed Bomb to knock them out, and we beat Grant, and that will be the second gym badge. Now moving on into Route 12 Pokemon, which is going to be an Execute. Not Execute, not the best Pokemon, but it's just going to be on our team. Uh, we spent a little bit finding ourselves an Execute because it's actually a decently rare encounter in here. So we're going to spend our time catching ourselves some Golden Eggs and add it to our team. Now funny enough, we're not going to spend any time. We're going to train it up to level 32 and then evolve it into an Executor right off the jump. Unfortunately, that means it does not learn any more psychic type moves, so it has confusion. But we do need it for the next gym, which is going to be against Karina. Our team is actually pretty dangerous. We're going to start the battle off against Karina using my Executor against Mienfu. Mienfu is going to do very minimum damage to me as I confusion him, knock him out. Next up, she can switch out to her Machoke, which I'm able to confusion twice against him and knock him out pretty easily. Waste his potion as well. Waste both her potions. And then her final Pokemon will be her Ace Pokemon, which is going to be Halucha, which is the biggest issue in her team. Uh, I decided since I got Leer down, I don't want to sack my executor right now. So I decided to switch out into my Roselia, which will take a flying press. And uh, unfortunately, I can't switch out this thing at all. So I got to sack my Roselia, which is unfortunate. I wanted to save the Roselia to evolve it into Rosary later on when I got some more moves. But unfortunately, I just sacked the Roselia here and then switch out into my Gloom. Now, I could have sacked Gloom, but Gloom was more tanky than Roselia. So I decided to stun spore down the Halucha first. And then try to acid it down and try to do some chip. I could survive two flying press, which is pretty nice, as it goes for another home claw. So I decided to switch out into my executor. I live a flying press, thankfully, at 72 HP. And then I'm able to confusion, knock him out at over half HP. And we end up beating Karina. And we got very lucky with that battle, but we lose one of our Pokemon already. Now, moving on from there, we're going to move out to the next gym in the game. We're going to move out into the grass gym. We're also a grass type trainer ourselves, so we're getting competitions for Ramos. We're going to start the battle off against Ramos using my Quilladin, which is not the best Pokemon, but it's one of the only ones that can do damage against this Jump Love. So I'm going to rock him twice against the Jump Love to knock him out. Actually worked out pretty well. Uh, the Go-Go comes on next. I do have an Evil Light on my Quilladin, so I have less of a worry as it's going to go for Bodos against me and takedowns. Uh, eventually, I am going to switch out into my own Go-Go and then start bulking up in front of him. I don't have a move. Go-Go actually learns Surf, which is a whole different rant. I don't know why I learned Surf, but it does. So I decided to just bulldoze him down. He's going to unfortunately live it. Now I had to keep bulking up. Uh, I should have just kept bulking up to start with and it would have just knocked him out eventually. But at this point now, it's just a bulldoze off and he's getting more damage off against me because he could heal. And unfortunately, I went for a seed bomb which activates his sap zipper. He gets a higher attack step because I messed up. So that's unfortunate for me. Well, I was like, how much would seed bomb do? Oh wait, he has sap zipper. I completely forgot. My own Gogo has sap zipper too. So this is just a bad fight for me. I decided to switch out into my Gloom, try and do some acid to him. He's going to take down me, and I'm almost dead. So I decided to switch out into uh, my Executor. Executor is going to take any hits from him. And luckily enough, it does get confused and hit itself in confusion to knock itself out. And then Ramos' last bow one will be a Weeping Bow, which I'm able to Psyche against it and knock him out in one shot. And we have been the fourth gym leader in the game. Pretty easy. Now moving on, we're going to move out into Lumio City once again. We're going to go into the next gym, the fifth gym of the game. The hardest part about this gym is to not get over level with my Go Goat. Once I am at the gym leader, it's pretty much free at this point. So I decided to face off against Claremont, the fifth gym leader in the game. And we start the battle off against him using my Bellossom, which I evolved using the Sunstone we got at Shoulder City. And we're able to Sleep Powder down the Emoga, and then we're able to Acid him. Just about half, and he's getting air lace once again. I live it, and then I just keep using acid for some reason. I live another air lace. I missed the sleep power, which is unfortunate. But I'm going to switch out into my Simi Sage to rock to him and knock him out. As he goes out to his Magneton next, which which I could go for a Leech Seed and then go out into my Go-Go, which can take any hit from this Magneton. I'm going to bulk up once against him. And then he went for a Thunderbolt, which doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does paralyze me, which now I'm kind of annoyed. If I do get stuck in paralysis, then my go is pretty much dead. And, but I luckily enough break through it. Bodos to knock out the Magneton. Get enough HP from Lone up that I feel confident into knocking him out. I'm able to Bodos into the Healer list to knock him out in one shot. And we end up beating Clemut. And we get the 5th gym batch in the game. Now next up, we're going to face off against our rival, uh, Serena, in Route 14. Uh, which is actually quite a difficult fight. We have to be very careful when facing off against our rival. Because they do have a Delphox that does a lot of damage. And luckily enough, we do get a Bodos off. And we're able to outspeed him. Uh, we didn't want to risk my Gogo. I wasn't too confident in the Gogo outspeeding Delphox. So I switched out to my Simi Sage to knock him out. But things are going to get very, very intense when facing off against Serena in the future. So from there, once we're in Route 14 though, we're able to find ourselves our next shiny Pokemon. In the grass, we're able to find ourselves a, a Weeping Bow. 
So we're going to find ourselves a shiny weeping bow. It looks barely any different, but we can capture it and add it to our team. It also evolves with leaf stones. So we have to do some more super training, which is kind of fun. But anyways, from there, we're going to move out into the sixth gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Valerie. Valerie's going to be the fairy type gym leader of the game. And we're going to start to battle off against her using my Gogo. We're just going to bulk up twice against the Mawile, which is not going to do any damage against us. And then Bodos will almost one-shot it, which is kind of crazy. But it's going to use Iron Defense. I'm able to get a Bodos. I'm able to get a bulk up up and eventually knock him out in two shots. Her next Pokemon will be a Mr. Mime, which I'm able to seed bomb it, knock him out in one shot. And then her final Pokemon will be a Sylveon which I'm able to see bomb as well, and one-shot that thing. So, easily sweep through Valerie, not an issue at all. Wish they gave more Pokemon to the gym leaders, so there's way more fairy types, but I mean, I go through this rant every single X and Y video. At this point, it's just an X and Y critique video. Moving on from there, we're going to move out into Route 14, 15, something like that. I think 14. Uh, we're going to use Sweet Scent from our Victory Route to encounter more Horde Battles. In these Horde Battles, we're able to find ourselves a Shiny Fungus, which we're able to capture and add it to our team. Even though we have a full team, we're going to put it to the PC. And if we need it, hint, hint, we're probably going to need it. From there, though, we're going to move out and face off against a rival in front of the next gym, which is going to be tough. We face off against Serena. Serena starts to battle off normally with her Meowstics. I go for a C-Bomb to knock him out. And then she switches out to her Delphox, which is obviously going to knock out my Simi Sage. I knew this going into this battle. Because obviously Delphox is going to live every hit. I have no moves against him. I couldn't sack anyone else. So Simi Sage has to go down unfortunately. So I switched out into my Gogo -Go next. Gogo -Go is going to Bodos. Take a hefty flame door and get burned. Bodos to lower Delphox's speed. And then switch out into my Chestnut. Which gets hit with a Psychic. Luckily lives it. And because of the Bodos lower speed. I'm able to outspeed him. Rock Tomb to knock out the Delphox. And at this point we're able to beat down Serena once we get rid of the Delphox. Bell Awesome is going to clean up the battle for us and things are looking fine. Uh, just unfortunately that we have to lose one of our Pokemon in this fight again. So death count goes up to 2 as we move on and face off against Olympia next. Olympia is going to be the 7th gym leader in the game and we're going to start the battle off against her using my Victory Bell. I'm okay, to, this sounds bad, but I'm okay with sacking my Victory Bell here. I'm just going to go for knockoffs against him. And lucky enough, since I paralyzed, he's going to get paralyzed multiple times. So I'm able to sword stance in front of him and knock him off using a knockoff. So Siglyph goes down pretty easily, and then her next Pokemon will be a Slowking, which I don't want to risk against it. So I go out into my Executor, take a few Psychics, which is fine. I do have to move Leaf Storm, so I'm going to put it to sleep first, and then for some reason Side Beam. And then I'm going for a Leaf Storm to knock out the Slowking in one shot. Her next Pokemon will be a Meowstic, which I should have stayed in and go for a Sleep Powder. He's going to fake out me, but I went out to my Bellossom next. I go for a Sleep Powder in front of him. Then I'm going for a Leaf Storm, which actually gets it down to pretty pretty low HP. So I decided to switch out into my Executor next. And it's going to wake up and hit me with a Shadow Ball, which caught me off guard. Because I was like, wait, what? It has Shadow Ball? So Executor goes down for no reason, and we lose Executor. But we're able to Horn Leech with my Gogo to knock out the Meowstic, which I should have done from the start. There goes another Pokemon, so the death count goes up to 3. And which is a bad trainer at this point. Uh, we decided to go back to Glittering Cave because there is, you know, a Pokemon for us to get in here, Pharaoh But uh, Pharaoh was not popping up at all. I spent a long, long time looking for Pharaoh in here. It was not working out. I maybe I got the wrong encounter list, but Pharaoh was not in here. So I had to go out and substitute it. Grass type Pokemon. We decided to go out and find ourselves a shiny Hoppip. We found it actually pretty quick in our hunting, so we are able to catch ourselves a green hop pip, evolve it into a jump pluff, and then move on and face up against Lysander. Now you might be wondering, jump pluff is not that crazy of a Pokemon, it's, it's not even that good of a Pokemon. Let me enlighten you to what jump pluff is. Jump pluff is a crazy Pokemon. It is going to sweep through Lysander, as you can see. It sword senses up and knocks out everything on Lysander's team, from the Mian Shell to the Pyro to the Honchkrow. I'm not going to touch the Gyarados, but Bell Awesome will get that, but... Jump Pluff was actually the best move I could have done ever because it's actually a great sweeper for some reason. So once we beat Lysander for the first time, we're going to catch ourselves a Xerneas. We're obviously not going to use it for our team and we're going to face out against Lysander for the final time. Lysander is kind of a threat. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Jump Pluff, which is going to Sleep Powder into the Mian Shell, which I take in Acrobatics. But then I needed to I needed to get the Sleep Powder off against him. There's no way I could miss two Sleep Powders, right? So I went out Sleep Powder down in Mian Shell. I went for a Sword Dance. In front of him, lucky enough, it stays asleep, and I'm able to acrobatics to knock him out in one shot. Next up, he's going to switch out into his pyro next. I'm able to acrobatics into him again to knock him out. And then his final Pokemon will be a Honchkrow, which gets knocked out with an acrobatics. Well, that's it. His final Pokemon, it's 
Second to last Pokemon. His final Pokemon will be a Mega Gyarados, which I'm not going to try to attempt to beat. So I switch out into my Bell Awesome, which will take the Brutal End of an Outrage. But I actually survive it pretty easily as I'm able to Leaf Storm into him to get him down to pretty low HP. And then I can switch out into my Moongus, Moongus which will take any hits pretty easily. And I don't do anything as it hits itself in confusion. And we're able to beat Lysander without losing a single Pokemon, which is amazing for us. Now moving on, we're going to face off against the final gym of the game. We're going to face off against Warfreak next. Warfreak's going to be the ice type gym leader of the game. And we're going to start the battle off against him using my chestnut. Well, I don't have a really great Pokemon to start the battle off against him. So we're going to power up punch into the bomb of snow. We're going to take an ice beam. But since I got power up punch boosted, power up punch will knock him out with a second hit. And his next Pokemon will be, unfortunately, a Cryogonal, which I don't have an answer to. Especially since my chestnut is very slow. I went out to my victory belt, which would take an ice beam. And it will not take another one. So, Big Shiro unfortunately goes down. That's going to be the fourth death in my game. Unfortunate. I go out to my Leafeon, which obviously I evolve off screen. I went for a Leaf Blade to one shot the Cryogno, which is crazy. He then goes out to his Avalok, so I decided to go out to my Amoongus, which will actually surprisingly knock him out. Two Giga Drains, two shots, the Avalok. And he didn't do any damage at all. So, we're able to beat down Avalok. We lose another Pokemon, we lose Victory Bell, but that's not too bad at all. From there, we're going to move on and face off against our rival once again at Victory Road. Luckily for us, Jump Club is actually a monster. Swords Dance Acrobatics will actually knock out everything except the Jotian, which will get Bullet Seed down. And we're able to beat down Serena super easily without losing another Pokemon. So from there, we're going to move out into the Pokemon League and face off against the Elite Four next. The Elite Four is pretty intimidating, but we, I think we can handle it. So the first Elite Four member that I'm thinking we should face off against is going to be Malva, the Fire-type Elite Four one. So we're going to start the battle off against Malva using my Jump Pluff. Now this plan was, yeah, I had to work the first attempt. So I'm going to Sleep Powder into him. Luckily it landed and then I can Sword Sense right in front of the Pyro. It stays asleep and then I'm like, you know what? I can take a hit. I'm going to Sword Sense in front of him and then he's going to wake up, hit me with a Flamethrower. Luckily it doesn't burn me. Would have been bad. Acrobatics to knock out the Pyro in one shot. And since I'm plus four, it will out I'm also going to be able to outspeed everything. Acrobatics would knock out the Talon Flame as well. And also the Torko in one shot. And finally, her Chandelure, which will go down. And we sweep through the first Leaf 4 member. And possibly the hardest one for us because it's the Fire-type one. So our Grass-type team sweep through Malva. And now we're going to face off against Wingstrom next. Wingstrom is going to be the Steel-type Leaf 4 member of the game. And it's quite difficult. So we're going to start the battle off against him using my go -Go To bulk up in front of the Klefki. Get two bulk ups up. And then he's going to torment me. So I'm able to Earthquake in front of him. Scissor comes up next. He's not too much of an issue. I could survive X Scissor pretty easily. And then I'm going to Earthquake into him. Unfortunately, he's going to X Scissor once again and crit my Go Goat. So that means Go Goat goes down for no reason. Uh, unfortunate crit. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate crit. So I have to go out into my Chestnut next. To, you know, basically rebuild everything. I'm going to Power Up Punch into the Scissor goes down, which looks like it only takes two. And then his next Pokemon will be an H Slash, which I'm going back and forth between Spiky Shield and a Bulk Up. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because he also has King Shield and also only physical attacking moves. So, I decided to go back and forth. He's going to do some chip damage to himself most of the time. And in between the turns that he wanted to use King Shield against me, I'm going for bulk ups, which will boost my defense. At this point, I'm basically indestructible against Aegislash and everything on his team. So, I'm able to just wait him out. I, I don't even let him hit me. He's going to King Shield up. I'm going to Seed Bomb him and break through his shield. Even through Shield Mode, I'm able to one-shot him. And the next Pokemon will be a Pro Pass, which... Does a little damage against me, but I'm able to knock him out fairly easily. Unfortunately for Gogo, he goes down. From there, we're going to face off against Drasna next. Drasna is going to be the Dragon type Elite Four member of the game. And just like Malva, it's not going to be pretty for her. Jump Love is going to Sword Sense and Sleep Powder in front of the Draglich, which basically means the battle is over because Jump Love is so broken. I don't know why it's so powerful. Is there a buff on Jump Love? But it's going to one shot the Draglich, one shot the Norvern, and outspeed him. Actually, doesn't one shot him, but it outspeed the Norvern somehow. So I'm able to two shot down the Norvern. Oh no, there's a one shot. It, I did. I got a sword sense up. Now it's a one shot. Altari comes on next. Can one shot that thing as well. And his final Pokemon was going to be a Dragon, which would not take a plus four acrobatics from Jump Club. And we're able to beat down Drasna and move on to the final Leaf Four member before the champion. We're going to face off against Seelberg next. Seelberg is going to be the water type Leaf Four member of the game. And we're going to use someone new now. We're going to use someone called Leafeon. Leafeon is going to one shot down Clawitzer. Barbarico comes up next, getting Leaf Blade to knock him out. And then his next Pokemon is going to be Gyarados, which I'm able to Sword Sense in front of. And for some reason, he gets three Dragon Dances up against me. And I go for Leaf Blades multiple times. He's going to keep Dragon Dancing up against me. And then he's going to Ice Fang me. 
and I live it pretty comfortably. Somehow I lived a Ice Fang from a Gyarados at full HP with my Leaf Run, even though he's plus three. So we're able to knock him out, and then next up he's gonna switch out to a Starmie, which I'm not gonna stay in. Obviously, he's gonna go for a Psychic against my Bell Awesome. It's gonna get crit and also special defense drop, but I'm going for a Leaf Storm, and he goes for a Light Screen, and Leaf Storm crits him and knocks him out. So <laughs> Starmie goes down, and we beat Sealberg, and we don't lose a single Pokemon from there. Then we're gonna move on to the champion, and we're gonna face off against Diantha next. Diantha is going to be the champion of Kalos, the final battle of the game, and we're gonna start the battle off against her using my Jump Love against. Her Halucha. Acrobatics, just one one shot the Halucha easily. I don't wanna mess around right there. Her next one was gonna be her Aurorus, which I'm gonna risk it a little bit. I'm going for a sleep powder and then bullet seed to three shot it. Oh, it's gonna wake up. It avoided the blizzard, luckily. That could have been really bad. I think it would have one shot my jump fluff, but I'm able to three shot it and knock him out. And the next Pokemon is going to be a Tyrantrum. I didn't want to set up because the Tyrantrum is gonna come out and also scare me out. So I went out to my chestnut. Chestnut is gonna avoid the head smash, which is kind of funny. And then it can bulk up in front of Tyrantrum and then knock him out using a Power Punch. Unfortunately though, that means he's going to go out to his Gudra next. He's going to trap me in here. I can't switch out to anyone else because someone else is going to die. So I decided to just take my damage here. Power Punch into the Gudra anyways. Get him down to really low HP. And then Fire Blast will knock me out, which is unfortunate. Then I'm going to go out to my Jump Pluff next. We're just going to Sword Sense because I know I could live a Fire Blast. Take a Fire Blast. Live a half HP. Exactly actually. And then Acrobatics would knock him out in one shot. Next up, she's going to switch out to her Gorgas, which will get one shot as well. And her final Pokemon will be a Mega Gardevoir, which I don't have any issues with, but I'm going one shot it with an Acrobatics. And down goes the Gardevoir. And we end up beating the champion of the game with only six deaths. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Considering that I played a lot of the parts pretty awfully, six deaths, not too bad. Our final battle is going to be AZ. I mean, obviously, I'm going to beat it down really easily. But that's been the challenge. Can we beat Pokemon X Hardcore Nuzlocke with only shiny grass type Pokemon? We can. We can. There's a lot of options that I didn't choose to use, especially namely Venusaur. But I think this challenge turned out pretty well. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you guys can, please leave a like and comment down below some challenge ideas and subscribe to the channel. My name is Ben Alpha. Hope you guys all had a great day and I'm out. Peace.